Hey guys, welcome back to another Hartman Controls Protector.net tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you guys how to add a door controller in the software. In our last video, we configured a ODM panel to communicate to the Protector.net web server via its static address. Once a panel makes its first contact with the server, we got the unknown panel notification along with the MAC address of the new panel. We will start by clicking on the unknown panel connection notification, which will bring us to the add panel page. You will select which model panel you have. The most common is the ODM, which stands for one door module. The other options are TDM for two door module and others. M is for motion and X is for no motion. If you ever need to determine which model you have, it is printed on the serial sticker to the right of the LCD screen on the panel. This one, we're going to select ODM M for motion. Next, you enter a name and description of the panel, ideally including the panel's location within the building and location relative to the door. Select a site. In this case, there's just one. We can see the MAC address is already filled in for us. And it's also important to configure a password on the controller. If previously you chose to set the panel up as a static IP, make sure to configure that under the TCP connection section. This is important because this information will get pushed to the panel once we do an update. Finally, press save and continue configuration. Once we click continue configuration, we now have more options we can optionally configure or reconfigure the settings we set when adding a panel. On the Options tab of the Edit Panel screen, we can configure the LCD on the panel, the forced open buzzer, and other various options. Most of the time, you'll leave everything on this page as is. The tamper sensor can be configured here. If you're still finalizing any of your wiring or will still be accessing the controller, it's a good idea to turn this off here, at least until the system is commissioned. For the sake of this video, I'm also going to disable the LCD backlight. Down here, we can also configure the options for the integrated motion sensor, if available. By default, these options work 99% of the time. Scroll down to the bottom, and click Save. The I.O. tab is where we can configure what functions are assigned to the relays and inputs on the panel. By default, we'll do our best to select the best functions based on the model you choose, but can be customized further. At this point, it's a good idea to disable or change any inputs and outputs on the board that you've connected or will connect. In some installs, for example, it's not possible to install door contact to monitor when the door opens and closes. In these cases, we will select the door contact input. Its information will now be displayed on the right-hand side. We can now change the function of the input from door contact to disabled. As you can see, there's lots of input and output options available. We'll go over most of these during specific scenarios in another video. Once we're happy with the configuration, we can click Save on the bottom of the page. Momentarily, our controller should be logging in. The next step is to do our first update to the panel. We can either wait for the auto update to complete, or we can update the panel manually by clicking the update button in the top right of the page. Answer any prompts. You will now see any information being downloaded to the panel. It will disconnect for a moment after you update it and come back online a moment later. If the panel does not come online after, the first thing to check is system settings. Ensure the server address field is either an IP or a resolvable DNS name. Our panel is now online, and that concludes this tutorial. Check out our next video where we'll show you how to add a door and configure door-specific options.